Chapter 83 Calvin cooked for the first time. She turned to look out the window. Fabian's nanny van was passing through the central square. Not far away was the entrance to the subway. I'll get off here. Just as she finished speaking, Eleanor signaled the driver to stop the car. Just as the car stopped, she opened the door. Before Fabian could react from his emotions, she had already jumped down. Fabian reached out to grab her, but only grabbed the air. She stood under the car and smiled at him. Fabian, thank you for your ride. She turned around and was about to leave. Wait a minute. Fabian called out to her. She stopped and turned to look. Fabian grabbed her grey coat and jumped out of the car. He shook off his clothes and draped them over her wet shoulders. She quickly refused. Before she could say anything, Fabian stuffed a warm pink phone into her hand. Your phone, I'll return it to you. Don't lose it again next time. I thought my phone was lost. Kayla held the phone that Fabian had given her in his hand. I always wanted to find a chance to return it to you and apologize to you at the same time. I'm sorry. Fabian said that although he did some inappropriate actions because of the drug that day, as a gentleman, he thought it was necessary to say sorry to Kayla. She did not know how to answer for a moment. Fabian pressed down her hand that she was about to refuse and did not give her a chance. Wear the clothes. Don't catch a cold. In a few days, you will go back to P.E. for filming. Dot. Kayla pulled her hand out of his hand and adjusted the front of her coat to block the cold wind. Thank you, Fabian. She whispered. After that, she turned around and blended into the crowd. She rushed into the stairs at the entrance of the subway and suddenly bumped into a tall man who came out of the subway station in a hurry. I'm sorry. She apologized and wanted to leave. After all, this was outside. Although she was not very famous and the popularity of the hot TV series was barely half a public figure, it was better for her to keep a low profile. She wanted to leave but the person who bumped into her did not want to let her go just like that. Don't you have eyes? The man stretched out his long arm and blocked her way. When she heard this voice, her back froze. This voice and the voice that brought her a nightmare in her memory strangely matched together. It had been so many years. She thought that she had already forgotten about it. She did not expect that a voice that was similar to that person would cause a stir in her heart. I'm sorry. She lowered her head and apologized in a low voice. Kayla. That person suddenly seemed like Columbus had discovered a new continent. Only then did Kayla raise her head and look at this man who was unwilling to give up, but still said his name. Jackie. She thought that she would never see this person again in her life but this person stood in front of her without warning. It really is you. Jackie quickly restrained the sloppy look on his face and said in pleasant surprise. He had been doing well before. When he came back from outside, he wanted to find his past friends to catch up. He called his ex-girlfriend by the way. Unexpectedly, she pretended not to know him. Sir, you got the wrong person. Kayla quickly reacted. His heart was already in turmoil, but his face was calm, pretending that he did not know this person at all. Kayla. Jackie was not completely sure that the woman in front of him was his ex-girlfriend Kayla. After all, Kayla was already a star now. Even if she was not a first-rate star, her reputation was enough to be picked up by a nanny van when she went out. It seemed that it was not suitable for her to take the subway. Kayla took advantage of his uncertainty and nodded apologetically to him, Sir, I am sorry. I am still in a hurry to take the car. After she finished speaking, she decisively turned around and ran toward the subway entrance. 
As she ran, the heart-shaped hair clip fell from her hair and fell on the muddy stairs. Jackie took a few steps and picked up the hair clip. She wanted to stop her, but she found that her figure was already submerged in the crowd coming and going. Jackie looked down and placed it on the hair clip in her hand. The diamonds inlaid on it were dazzling. Kayla took the phone and went to the subway. She did not feel relieved until the subway started and she did not see the man catch up. There were fewer passengers in this car, and there were still many empty seats. She found a seat and sat down. Her hands trembled uncontrollably. People who did not know might think that she was cold, but only she knew that she was afraid and nervous. Logically, it should be Jackie who was afraid of her. After all, the person who had wronged her was Jackie. Before she could sort out this logic in a lump of paste's mind, the subway had already arrived at the next stop. When she heard the name of the place, she found that she had randomly gotten into a car and sat in the opposite direction. She quickly stood up and got out of the car before the car closed. By the time she returned to North City apartment, the sky was already completely dark. She wandered outside like a wandering soul for almost a day. When she stood at the door, it was as if she suddenly came back to life. She felt cold and hungry. She raised her hand, and just as her finger touched the electronic lock on the door, the door opened from the inside. Calvin stood at the door with a gloomy face. Calvin originally planned to go out to find someone, but when the door opened, he saw her standing there, wet in a man's coat. She looked as miserable as she could be. Calvin. She whispered like a child who had done something wrong. Seeing her like this, Calvin could no longer put on a gloomy face. He reached out and pulled her into his arms. Where did you go? Why didn't you answer the phone? Kayla did not answer. He was stunned for a moment and reached out to hug his waist. Her hug caused Calvin's anger to dissipate in an instant. All that was left in his heart was his concern for her. When she entered the door, her body, which had adapted to the cold air outside, shivered from the stimulation of the heater in the room. Her nose itched and she sneezed a few times in a row. Calvin could no longer rebuke her and pushed her in the direction of the master bedroom. Hurry up and take a shower and change your clothes. Don't catch a cold. Your body is not good to begin with. His last sentence sounded like he was complaining, but she still heard it. She understood that he was concerned about her, but she felt a little upset. When Calvin saw her enter the master bedroom door, he turned around and walked into the kitchen. He took out brown sugar aged ginger from the refrigerator, scooped half a ladle of water, and cooked ginger water for Kayla in the soup pot. It was said that this thing had a miraculous effect on prevention of cold. He followed the steps found on Beidou and guarded the pot. He watched as the brown sugar melted in the pot and put down a few pieces of cut old ginger. The water in the pot boiled into many brown flowers. In the air, the old ginger carried the sweet taste of the brown sugar and gradually became rich. Calvin, who was cooking for the first time, turned off the fire and looked at his masterpiece with satisfaction. He took a sip. After the faint taste of old ginger, it was the sweet taste of red sugar. It tasted good. He gave himself a full score and brought the ginger soup into the room with satisfaction. The sound of rushing water came from the bathroom. He put the ginger soup on the bedside table and looked down to see the man's coat that Kayla had thrown on the bed and a mobile phone that he had not seen for a long time. The sound of water in the bathroom stopped. He looked at the closed bathroom door. His eyes gradually became deep, but his mobile phone rang untimely. He took out his mobile phone and glanced at the caller ID. His slender mobile phone swiped the answer button. Hello. Rudy's respectful voice sounded in his ear, Boss, 
just now the chief editor of Star Weekly called to ask if he could publish the photos of Miss Hayes and Mr. Clark tomorrow. Chapter 84 A Fickle Woman After listening to Rudy's report, his eyes stopped on the phone for a long time. He remembered that after he saved Kayla at the party last time, the phone had disappeared. The warmth that he had been carried out by Kayla at the door had gradually cooled down. What do you mean? This afternoon, a reporter secretly took photos of them under the overpass of the central square. Calvin's heart moved slightly, and his clear eyes instantly cooled down. He became colder and colder, but the words he told Rudy made it impossible to hear any change in his mood. After he said this, he did not continue for a long time. At the other side of the line, Rudy almost thought that there was a problem with the signal. He only added a feint as usual and hung up the phone. He threw the phone on the bedside table and slid it on the smooth cabinet. It just happened to hit the white porcelain bowl with ginger soup, making a crisp sound. Now it was not difficult for him to guess who the clothes belonged to. As for the phone, if Fabian picked it up, why didn't he return it immediately, but it took so long to return it? If there was really nothing between them, he would not believe it at all. Just now, Kayla's hug almost made him believe that he had warmed her heart. Now, it seemed that he was just thinking too much. He had never felt so frustrated before. She minded that he had a fiancé. He was already thinking of a way to solve it. Why was she not willing to give him any time? The sound of water in the bathroom stopped. Kayla came out with a towel wrapped around her hair. She saw him standing by the bed. The air was filled with the unique taste of ginger soup. Just as she was about to speak, Calvin raised her head and a pair of cold eyes swept over. The words she wanted to say automatically swallowed back. Calvin's current state looked like a barrel of gunpowder. Whoever lit it would blow it up. She could only pretend that she did not see it. She lowered her head and opened the cabinet to take out the hairdryer inside, carefully avoiding Calvin's bad luck. She did not know that her quick dodging eyes just now was a sign of guilt in Calvin's eyes. As the buzz buzz of the hairdryer ended, the string of Calvin's mask that was stretched taut with warmth finally broke. Kayla had just put the hairdryer back to its original position when her slender wrist, which was holding the handle of the cabinet, was held by a strong force. Calvin pulled her hard, and she slammed into his hard body. Just as she held his chest and stood firm, his cold words came to her ears. Who did you meet today? Kayla felt a chill in her heart. She thought that it would be over if Calvin didn't explode when she entered the door. Now it seemed that her patron didn't intend to let it go. Whose clothes are they? The coat and mobile phone handed to her. Kayla knew that he had already guessed who it was. The more he acted like this, the more she didn't want to say it. She raised her head and fearlessly met the flames of anger in Calvin's eyes. She said indifferently, A friend. A friend. Boyfriend. Calvin sneered. Calvin. A strange boyfriend angered Kayla. She was like a hedgehog that had been caught by someone, raising sharp spikes. What? I hit the nail on the head. Are you angry from embarrassment? Calvin threw down the evidence in his hand and unceremoniously pinched her sharp chin. Let me guess, is this boyfriend of yours someone I know? With that, he lowered his head and kissed her forehead like a dragonfly skimming the surface of the water. The warmth of his thin lips had yet to disperse on her forehead when his next words sent her into the frozen hell. When you met, did he kiss you like me? Calvin, you bastard! Kayla was furious. His roar was furious and intimidating. He clenched his fists tightly. Calvin's words were like a sharp knife that stabbed directly into her heart. Anyone was qualified to trample on her and insult her. It was Calvin who could not. 
the reason why she was so rotten in the mud was related to him. As her voice fell, the light kiss stopped at the tip of her delicate nose for a moment and imprinted on her warm lips. It separated immediately without any lust, a smile that was not a smile, and an overwhelming malice surrounded her. Here, has he kissed me before? Kayla raised her hand to slap him, but just as she raised her hand, she was caught by him. What? Am I right? Just as Calvin finished speaking, her lips were kissed by him in the next second, and the force was like a lion announcing its leadership to her. First, it was verbal insult, then it was physical insult. She did not even think about it and opened her mouth to bite him. The effect was immediate. A second ago, she was still running her territory tongue in her mouth, but in the next second, she retreated from her territory. Then, she opened her mouth and bit his arm. She clenched her teeth and easily tasted the salty taste of blood. Calvin finally let go of the restraint on her. His tongue touched the mouth that was bitten by her. He raised his hand to look at the bloody row of teeth marks on his wrist. The anger in his eyes burned even more. Kayla spat out a mouthful of blood. She had had enough of these kinds of days. She didn't want to run away anymore. Anyway, Calvin was very angry now, so she might as well make it clear at once. You don't have to be like this. I can tell you anything you want to know. She turned her head and looked back arrogantly. Calvin looked down at her. He had the pressure of a superior. He raised his eyebrows and sneered. He laughed at her for overestimating herself. It's too late. I already know who you are with today. When he said this, it was Kayla who raised her eyebrows. Who? Calvin looked at the man's coat on the ground. He was possessive, like a demon beast that was tyrannical in Calvin's heart. She followed his gaze and looked at the coat on the ground. She sneered, Do you want to say Fabian? Yes, I have seen him today. The clothes were lent to me by him when he saw me so cold. Look at how cold you are. There are so many people on the street. Why does he look at you pitifully? Kayla, do you think I am a three-year-old child? Calvin raised his hand and applauded her acting. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. That's all I can say. She knew that he would not believe her. When she thought about how he said that he wanted to date her, she felt that it was ridiculous. It was even more ridiculous that he wanted her to have a child with him. When she thought about it, she could not help but chuckle. What are you laughing at? Are you laughing at me for not being able to do it? She pulled back her long hair that had fallen to her chest and took a step forward. Calvin deeply felt that he had been looked down upon by this woman in front of him. He stood still, unmoving like a mountain. Get out of the way. Kayla finally couldn't continue acting. All of her self-esteem had been trampled under his feet. What else did he want her to do? Calvin was still as motionless as a mountain, blocking her way. What right do you have to do this to me? She raised her hand and her angry pink fist landed on his body. What right do you have to? Tears fell like a dam breaking a river. He raised his hand and grabbed her hand that was constantly falling on his chest. Looking at the woman in front of him who was crying violently, a corner of his cold and hard heart collapsed. Why are you making such wild guesses about me? What have I done wrong? I was thrown into a mess by your fiancé early in the morning, and when I came back, I was accused by you for no reason at all. Since I am such a fickle woman in your eyes. Chapter 85 Playing Big Cards and Playing with Fans Before she could finish her sentence, Calvin lowered his head and kissed her chattering mouth. With how clean and self-centered Kayla was, there was no reason for him to suspect that she had an affair with Fabian. However, 
he had personally heard that she liked Fabian. Sealing the letter with a kiss did not seal Kayla's crying. After the kiss, she continued, even if I am really such a person, what right do you have to blame me? Our relationship is ugly, but we are just friends. Betty is right. Even if you like me now, you will return to your family sooner or later after you marry her. What am I? She said so much in one breath and finally vented the anger that had been in her heart for the past few days. It didn't matter how Betty treated her during filming. It didn't matter if Betty hit her door and called her a bitch. She was his fiancé and she was right to scold him. She was a shameless bitch who used her skin to steal the love of others and even dreamed of getting the true heart. She even felt that her face was detestable. I said that I will solve Betty's problem. Calvin looked at her, his eyes filled with heartache. Had. No need. I'm tired. There's no point in continuing to pester Calvin. Kayla laughed. Before she could finish, Calvin interrupted her harshly, I can't. He was afraid to hear the news of her leaving from her mouth. Don't worry, I might not have any dignity in your heart. After all, I am a trustworthy person. We signed a contract for a year, so I will follow the rules. After she finished speaking, she squeezed past Calvin and walked towards Cloakroom. This time, Calvin did not stop her. He watched her walk into Cloakroom. His thin lips opened, but the words he wanted to say were forcibly swallowed back. Kayla held back his anger. When he changed into his home clothes and went out, he did not see Calvin in the room. She had been delayed for a long time. The ginger soup on the bedside table had cooled down. She picked it up and took a sip. The taste was not very good, but it was not as bad as she had imagined. She dried it in one breath, took the empty bowl and pretended to go out to search for food. Unexpectedly, she did not see Calvin. For the next few days, she did not see Calvin. She did not know what method Calvin used. After a few days, the SI group and Zhao group jointly released a statement, stating that Betty and Calvin had an engagement before. The statement said that the so-called engagement was a false thing. Betty saw it the moment the statement was released. She was stunned in front of the computer, and the more she thought about it, the more unwilling she was. That day, after she left Cigna Limited, she called Tia to cry and complain. Tia was determined to stand on her side, saying that he only acknowledged her as his daughter-in-law, so that she could put more effort into Calvin. She did not expect that there would be such a statement today. Falling from the clouds to the dirt, her beautiful dream was broken, how could she be willing? In the end, it was all because of that vixen Kayla. Betty screamed hysterically. She picked up the computer and smashed it on the ground to vent her anger. Looking at the broken computer on the ground, Fault waved his hand and swept all the other items on the table to the ground. Kayla, bitch, I will definitely not let you go. After leaving Cigna Limited that day, Kayla did not go back to work again. First, it was embarrassing to be chased by Betty. Second, it was also because she needed to rest up and go to the crew to shoot. At the beginning, she did not know that Betty and Calvin had broken off the engagement. After that night when she and Calvin had parted unhappily, they had not met. Early the next morning, her personal assistant, Nora, ended her vacation and returned to work. The news of Calvin and Betty breaking off the engagement spread to her ears. Logically, she should be happy, but she could not be happy at all. She did not think that Calvin broke off the engagement with Betty because of her. She did not have that kind of confidence. These days, Calvin did not come back. She sighed in her heart. Although she had doubts in her heart, she did not have the habit of calling Calvin. 
After the fifteenth day of the first month, she returned to the crew to film. Originally, she was prepared to deal with Betty's mockery. Unexpectedly, she did not see Betty in the crew. It turned out that the crew arranged for the male and female protagonists to go out of the outdoor scene. She looked at the schedule. She did not know if it was intentional or not, but the scenes between her and Betty were compressed to the late stage of filming. There were a lot of rumors in the crew. The staff's attitude towards her was much more respectful compared to the early stage. This kind of experience made her feel uncomfortable. She felt like she was walking on a tightrope on a cliff. If she was not careful, she would fall to pieces. This kind of pressing feeling made her very uneasy. During filming, she kept making mistakes. The director said that she wanted to find a hole to hide in. Kayla, is this result of you studying for a month? In the face of the director's merciless criticism and questioning, she did not know how to answer for a moment. She could only lower her head and silently accept it. After being scolded by the director, she acted much more smoothly. The director was very pleased to see her performance through the monitor. She did not have many scenes. The filming ended very quickly. She did not dare to stay too long in the crew. In the public opinion of the small group of the crew, she had already become the third party who had successfully pushed away the main character. It was best to keep a low profile. She hurried out of the set with Nora and passed through the gate of the residential area where the sample room was located. Her nanny van stopped at the corner of the street. This was a newly developed residential area. Except for this already built residential area, the surrounding area was full of busy construction scenes. The slag cart sped past the road, lifting up the sand and dust of the world. She covered her mouth and nose and rushed to the opposite side of the road. Before she could stand still, someone grabbed her arm. Kayla. Jackie's haunting voice made Kayla suddenly stand still and unable to move. Nora, who was one step behind, pretended not to see her star being harassed and lowered her head to rub her eyes. Billy, who was in the nanny van, reacted immediately. He rushed over and forcefully pushed Jackie aside. Brother, reason is chasing stars. What are you doing? Who are you? Nora shouted as he shielded Kayla behind him with a worried expression. His loud voice immediately attracted the attention of the gossip reporters stationed outside the set. The sound of cameras snapping rang out. The next day, the news of Kayla being arrogant and indulging in beating up fans was posted on the front page of a certain gossip magazine. However, this news was only short-lived and did not have any negative impact on Kayla. Soon, it was covered up by even more explosive and entertainment news. Chapter 86 I Can Give You What He Doesn't Have Kayla was escorted back to the car by Billy, who was surrounded by several paparazzi. After a while, he came back to his senses. Jackie did not give up the determination to talk to her because of Billy's dissuasion. After the nanny car started, he followed the car for a while. He could not catch up with the car and stopped. Kayla looked at the figure slowly becoming smaller in the dust in the rearview mirror and breathed a sigh of relief. Billy thought that she was scared. Now, Seeing that she had recovered from her tense state, he said, Miss Hayes, the ratings are good. The more crazy the fans are, the more it shows that you have made the character very successful. You are used to it. Kayla gave a faint hum. After a while, she said, Don't let Mr. Lowe know about this. Nora curled her lips in disdain from an angle she couldn't see and responded to Billy in unison. Hearing the two people's answers, her heart was finally relieved. Jackie's sudden appearance was like a stone thrown into a calm ancient well, causing a small ripple. The ripple was too small and soon fell silent. Winter passed and spring came. 
In the blink of an eye, it was the third month of spring. There were many peach blossoms planted in the green belt in Shangjing. The trees that lost their leaves drew out some bright pink buds. They complemented each other, and they were so beautiful that they had a unique flavor to them. Kayla wore a dress and exited the venue of the Peach Blossom Award ceremony in advance. She stood in the chilly spring and waited for Billy to drive over to pick her up. The Peach Blossom Award was the authority of the domestic entertainment industry. It was a professional performance award, and it was quite famous internationally. Kayla was lucky to get a nomination because of her character in Coming over to participate was considered as getting rid of the suspicion of rubbing the red carpet. She stood where she was for less than two minutes before a security guard in the uniform of the venue walked in her direction. She did not care. Who knew if he was going to enter the venue through the door she came out from? When that person came closer, she realized that this was the Jackie that she had caught a glimpse of that day in the film crew of Cloning Lovers. Miss Hayes, it's really not easy for me to see you. The way Jackie addressed her changed from the slightly intimate Kayla to the polite Miss Hayes, causing Kayla, who had suddenly heard his voice, to be stunned. Although it was a flat and straightforward tone, Kayla could hear a faint malice in it. She raised her eyes to observe the environment she was in. There were cars coming and going in the distance, but there was no one around. She could only blame the security work of the Peach Blossom Award for being too good. Jackie looked at her and smiled. His hands, which were empty just now, magically took out a hair clip that looked familiar to her. You seem to be very nervous. She pondered for a long time. The hair clip that was inlaid with diamonds was the one she had lost for no reason more than two months ago. The fingers of her hands were tangled together in a panic, forcing herself to calm down. Jackie had repeatedly found her. It was unrealistic to continue pretending not to know him now. It was better to figure out why he had come to her first. Mr. Chen, you must be joking. She raised her head and smiled. Meeting an old friend makes me lose my composure. Sorry for making you laugh. Why don't you pretend that you don't know me today? Jackie directly exposed her disguise. Kayla's smile froze on her face, and in the blink of an eye, it became cold. What do you want? Jackie looked at her with a fake smile and said casually, I really miss meeting an old friend. My big star. She was a little confused about what Jackie was thinking. Back then, he was the one who got drunk and sold her out. Today, he appeared in front of her and said that he missed her. She really wanted to cut his heart with a knife and see what color it was. Miss Hayes, shouldn't you thank me for your achievements today? Jackie didn't wait for her to answer and looked at her from head to toe with a malicious gaze. Without even thinking, Kayla raised her hand and gave him a slap. Jackie didn't dodge. He took a slap from her and laughed like a lunatic. Well beaten, that's how it should be. This is the Kayla I knew back then. Kayla, do you know how I lived for more than three years? She didn't want to know at all. She just wanted to get rid of this selfish psychopath quickly. I regret it, Kayla. I was wrong. Can you come back to my side? Not good. She answered firmly. Although Jackie had a face full of regret, she felt that it was just a clumsy performance without sincerity. Back then, she was too naive and easy to fool. That was why she fell for his trick. Jackie looked at her with a stunned expression. He did not expect her answer to be so straightforward. This was completely different from the indecisive and simple Kayla in his impression. After Jackie left, her nanny van appeared at the end of the road and drove over. She turned around and walked away, but was stopped by Jackie. What are you doing? Kayla shook off Jackie's hand in disgust. Her usually gentle eyes became stern. 
Jackie withdrew his hand with a forced smile and quietly ran over to block her way. The smile on his face showed a hint of flattery. He was completely different from the person who greeted him when they first met. Kayla, don't be like this. It was my fault in the past. Give me a chance. Let's start over again, okay? Kayla sneered. She had seen many thick-skinned people, but to the extent of Jackie's thickness, it was simply the best in the world. After she answered with disgust, she changed her mind and wanted to avoid Jackie's obstruction, but Jackie refused to let go of her again, putting on a forced posture that if she did not agree, he would not give up. Get out of the way. No, unless you forgive me and promise to be with me. Jackie, where did your confidence come from? It's not that I look down on you, Kayla stopped and said with a sneer, my lipstick costs several thousand yuan. Can a small security guard like you afford it? She was not such a mean person usually, but she had to use harsh words as a weapon against a villain like Jackie. From the time that Jackie had deliberately forged it, Kayla had disguised herself very well. When she said this, Jackie finally found some clues to attack her from what she said. No wonder you are unwilling to forgive me. You have changed. You were not like this before. They said that you were kept by the big boss named Calvin. Hearing this, Kayla's cold face was covered with a layer of frost. It has nothing to do with you. My car is coming. While they were talking, Billy had already parked her nanny car under the steps. Kayla walked around him and walked down the steps. Kayla, I have money. I can give you anything he can give you. I can also give you what he can't give you. Kayla turned a deaf ear and got into the car door that Billy opened for her without any hesitation. Jackie watched her get in the car. His eyes were cold. He had made some money in his business all these years. He remembered what he had done in the past. He wanted to come back and make up for it, but it was a pity that Kayla did not know what was good for her at all. Previously, she had pretended not to know him several times, but today, he had lowered his attitude so low to beg for her forgiveness. She had just walked away with a foot in the nose. She was just a whore. If he had not been kind enough to build a bridge for her, she would have achieved what she had today. If not for him, she would not even know where Calvin's door was opened. Chapter 87 He was pushed to the edge of the wind. However, after not seeing her for a few years, she had grown up a lot compared to three years ago. She was much more beautiful in real life than on TV, especially her curvaceous figure. Kayla's car had already gone far away, and he was still looking in that direction while silently cursing. Suddenly, an ear-piercing cold snort came into his ears. Jackie turned his head and saw a beauty. It was Betty, the former fiance of Calvin, who was currently being supported by Rootwear Group's banner. What, is Miss Hayes ignoring you? Jackie smiled and pretended to be gentle and elegant. It seems that Miss Hall really likes to rub salt on other people's wounds. Forgive me for being blind, but I didn't see where producer Chen was hurt. The two of them talked with each other. More than two months ago, Betty saw the report of his crazy fan harassing Kayla in a gossip magazine. He sent someone to contact him secretly. From then on, the two of them crossed paths again and again for their respective purposes. Billy carefully observed Kayla from the rearview mirror all the way. On such a cold day, she was wearing an off-shoulder dress. She did not add clothes immediately when she got on the car. If she was sick, his salary would be deducted again. Kayla, who was afraid of the cold, looked very abnormal. At a red light, Billy stopped the car and could not help but turn to remind her, Miss Hayes. Kayla came back to her senses in a trance and turned her gaze from outside the window. Miss Hayes, 
it's getting cold these past few days. It's a little cold. When she heard this, she felt a little cold. She took the clothes on the side and put them on. I didn't feel it even if you didn't say it. Thank you. Billy took the opportunity to tell him the news he had gotten from Rudy. Mr. Lowe is returning to the capital at four o'clock this afternoon. Then let's go to the airport. Kayla heard this and smiled. Billy was her manager in name, and she had other newcomers with her before. She didn't know when she had become her personal manager and assistant. As for Nora, she inexplicably didn't like her. Although she was an assistant for 24 hours, she rarely brought her out. When Billy heard her say this, it just happened to be a green light. He drove through the intersection and happily turned to the gate of the airport at the end of the road. He went up the city highway and headed straight to the airport. Kayla looked at the speeding scenery outside the window and smiled without saying anything. It seemed that even if she didn't say it, Billy was going to take her to the airport to pick up the plane. Her physical condition, as well as the relationship between her and Calvin, were clearly related to his salary, and he was more concerned about it than she was. Making things convenient for others was making things convenient for herself, but she really wanted to drive. The car drove to the airport parking lot and stopped right next to Calvin's Maybach. The plane was late and Calvin arrived an hour later than expected. She had nothing to do in the car and was playing with her mobile phone. She did not expect that she would be nominated. This was also an unexpected income. Originally, she should be happy, but when she thought of the person she met when she came out of the venue, her happiness had to be reduced. Calvin was very happy to see Kayla's nanny van next to her car. After that unhappy quarrel, as soon as the news of him breaking off the engagement with Betty came out, the two of them safely crossed the honeymoon period of love. Calvin said so, but Kayla did not care. After the honeymoon period, it was the weariness period. Even if Calvin really loved her, he could not marry her. She was better to be happy and happy in time. Even if they separated in the future she would take out more times to reminisce. Rudy put Calvin's luggage on the Maybach and got into her nanny van. She adjusted the coat that was draped over her shoulders, opened the door and got out. Billy left her and Calvin behind and left with Rudy. Calvin honked at her twice in the car. She opened the door and sat in the passenger seat. She pulled the safety belt and fastened it. Her movements were smooth and smooth. When she looked up, she saw Calvin's magnified handsome face. A warm touch came from her lips, and it separated immediately. Why are you free to pick me up today? Calvin said as he started the car. I miss you. It was rare for Kayla to not be pretentious, so he admitted it openly. Calvin's thin lips curved into a smile. It could be seen that she was in a good mood today. Today, your mouth is so sweet. You've smeared honey on it. Let me try it. As he spoke, he kissed her plump lips again, twisting and turning as he deepened this kiss that had been separated for a few days. When he had tasted enough, he withdrew from her mouth, his aftertaste endless. It's much sweeter than honey. Kayla glared at him angrily and turned to look out of the window. The sweetness in her heart was endless. This kind of peaceful and sweet atmosphere continued until they took a detour to the Michelin five-star restaurant to have dinner. When they got home, they washed up and rolled into bed. Kayla found that his period was on time. Kayla held his clean pants and entered the bathroom. Calvin felt a little defeated and took out a cigarette box from the bedside. He took it out and kept it in his mouth. With a click, the orange-yellow flame jumped on M.T. Huo for a while and lit it. He took a deep breath, stood up, and pushed open the door of the balcony. Only then did he spit out the remaining smoke. In the distance, 
the rainbow flashed, and it was beautiful like a dream. It had been almost three months. From the winter snow to the warm flowers blooming, he had worked so hard, but he still hadn't been able to make her pregnant with his own child. He felt that she was about to be unable to catch her. He didn't know if he wanted to use his child to tie her down because of his illness, right? But he didn't have much of a way out. Back then, in order to cancel that damned engagement with Betty, he had used some extreme methods to brush aside the face of the old man of the Lowe's and also hurt the relationship between the two families. During this period of time, all his companies overseas had some accidents, causing him to run around everywhere. It must be related to them. He had to find a way to grasp the right of the Lowe's in his hands as soon as possible. He looked at Ni Hong in the distance, too entranced. The orange sparks on his fingertips were about to burn to the end. Kayla, who had changed her pants, came out of the bathroom and saw the wind blowing the curtains on the ground. Calvin stood on the balcony in a single shirt. She picked up the sleeping robe he had thrown aside, walked out, put her feet on his back, and hugged him from behind. Calvin only felt a warmth on his back that had been chilled by the cold wind. He put out the cigarette that was about to burn to the end. He raised his hand and grabbed her from behind. He hugged her tightly in his arms and raised his head slightly. His firm chin rested on her head. It's so cold outside, why don't you wear more? Didn't you only wear a little? Kayla said in a bad mood. This person was only allowed to set fire to the state officials and not to light the lanterns. It's different. What's different? We don't care about gender discrimination. Kayla broke free from his arms, threw down this sentence and returned to the room. It was indeed cold in the late spring. The following days were peaceful and quiet. Calvin seemed to have encountered some trouble. The number of times he went on business trips became more and more frequent. Every time he came back, his face was covered in fatigue. Kayla saw it and wanted to help, but he could not enter through the door. He could only be more considerate and tolerant of him in life. It was just that the good times did not last long. Just as the shooting of clone lovers was about to end, a piece of news suddenly pushed Kayla into the center of public opinion.